So you're listening to Ask Your Herb Doctor on KMUD Garberville 91.1 FM and from 7.30 until the end of the show at 8 o'clock you're invited to call in with any questions either related or unrelated to this month's topic of the misinformation concerning energy production, diabetes and saturated fats. The number here if you live in the area is 923-3911 or if you live outside the area the toll free number is one 800 568 3723. That's 1-800-KMUD-RAD. And we can also be reached toll-free on 1-888-WBM-HERB for further questions during normal business hours, Monday through Friday. So once again, uh, we're very pleased to have Dr. Raymond Peake with us, uh, endocrinologist, uh, researcher, uh, many, many years of uh, experience under his belt to illuminate some of the misinformation that's uh, so prevalent in the medical literature. So, Dr. Pete, thank you for joining us again. Yeah, I... As always, um, people may have tuned in who perhaps have never listened to the show, so it's always a very good idea to just give an overview of your background, your education, and uh, what you're bringing to the show this evening. Um, I've studied a lot of different things, but my, my biological study was at the University of Oregon, uh, um, I spent four years there working on a PhD, starting out thinking I was going to do uh, nerve biology and brain biology, and uh, the people in that section were so dogmatic, I looked around and found that the uh, reproductive physiology and aging people were actually scientifically <laughs> oriented, so I shifted over and did my dissertation on uh, the hormones and physiology and, and uh, energy metabolism of aging and the reproductive system. Okay. Now I know that you're uh, you're very interested in uh, maintaining a good thyroid function. I think that's one of the main things that we both have uh, found is a, a key cornerstone to uh, maintaining biological energy production, and that's so important in fighting the uh, negative effects of the environmental material that we'd come into contact with that would um, lower our our own metabolic energy. So I think the uh, the first probably the first reference uh, to metabolic energy and the um, prevalence in the food chain of the the material that is uh, counterproductive to good health is um, the saturated fats versus the non-saturated, or sorry, versus the polyunsaturated. So in your understanding, that's, is that the main, one of the main uh, stumbling blocks for the uh, misinformation of uh, diabetes and triglycerides and general lipid um, health? Yeah, I think so. Um, it, uh, the people who created the idea of the essential fatty acids actually a few years later um, did an experiment uh, with one of their lab people that I think really showed uh, all of the important features of why people should not eat the essential so-called fatty acids. Uh, in 1929, when the Burrs uh, published their claim that the, uh, the uh, polyunsaturated fats, linoleic acid and linolenic acid, mm -hmm. uh, they said those are essential for life. Other biologists had uh, shown that animals were healthier when they had no fat in their diet, uh, had no, almost no cancer uh, spontaneously developing. Uh, but the birds simply ignored the evidence that uh, the fats were harmful and uh, other biologists ignored them pretty much for, for about 20 years because the evidence was so overwhelmingly against uh, <laughs> their claims. Gosh. But um, in their uh, faith that the, those fats were essential, one of their uh, lab people uh, agreed to go on a, a fat-free diet for six months. And uh, his health remarkably improved. <laughs> uh, his 
is a blood lipids changed somewhat. The cholesterol went down a little, and the, the triglycerides went up a little, but the total lipids quantity stayed about the same. But uh, he didn't get tired after a day's work, as he always had, and his lifelong weekly migraine headaches disappeared forever. Okay. Uh, so uh, nothing really was uh, uh, assuring the, the support of their position until the uh, seed oil industry uh, wanted to market their um, liquid seed oils, cotton seed oil, uh, uh, linseed oil, uh, soybean oil, and so on. Mm-hmm. And uh, they brought the burrs out of obscurity and uh, said since they have proven that the fatty acids, linoleic acid and linolenic, are essential for life, uh, we'll uh, get the public to eat them in huge quantity <laughs> and uh, treat them as drugs rather than as simply a trace nutrient that, uh, according to their uh, somewhat uh, unconvincing research, uh, as trace nutrients, they were supposedly doing something to make the skin uh, healthier, but uh, there, the counter evidence had included such things as uh, uh, many animal diseases that uh, uh, degenerative uh, brain disease, uh, atrophy of the gonads and the infertility and so on were uh, connected with eating too much of the unsaturated fats and uh, uh, vitamin E was found to protect against that. Okay. So uh, the it was all a marketing campaign to, to uh, sell the idea that not only are those fats essential, but they're good for you, and like a drug, they'll prevent heart disease. But uh, very soon, people started uh, producing evidence showing that, in fact, linoleic acid not only causes heart disease, but uh, promotes cancer, uh, immune problems, uh, all kinds of uh, things similar to what they had seen in the animals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, all, all of these poofers then are the, the fish oils, the hemp seed oil, canola, etc. So these are all the uh, liquid uh, oils that you're referring to that are so common in the food chain now. Yeah. And um, <coughs> in the 1950s, uh, they were feeding a lot of fish to mink uh, okay. in the mink farms, and uh, they were producing what was called the yellow fat disease, right. okay. uh, which apparently was uh, related to the age pigment, lipofusca, okay. huh. which is a brown pigment that develops from the breakdown of the polyunsaturated fats. Right. Uh, so the fish oils were uh, right along with the seed oils were seen to be toxic in the 50s and 60s. But by the 1970s, linoleic acid was being recognized as a major cause of heart disease and cancer. (laughs) And so they had sold the public on the idea of essential fatty acids, so they just changed the story and said, well, fish oils or linseed oil are a different kind of of fat. They aren't uh, the omega minus six oils like the deadly linoleic acid. Okay. Uh, they're the omega minus three. Right. Uh, but those had already themselves been incriminated with the yellow fat right. and lipofuscin disease. Huh. Okay. So they just switched tactics to the N3s and uh, tried to sell those, huh? Yeah. And that's where we are now with the fish yeah. oil craze. Yeah. Yep. Well, what I find is um, quite interesting is <clears throat> with our clients' blood work, when they we say, oh, you know, have you had some blood work done? Why don't you bring it in and let's look at it? So a lot of clients have elevated liver enzymes. And when they start eating coconut oil, those enzymes come down. Um, yeah, a, a researcher on hepatitis and cirrhosis, uh, AA Nanji, uh, for years has been... Uh, showing that the poly 
unsaturated fats into the liver. Uh, I think it started with uh, uh, an Indian researcher noticing that in the butter regions of India, alcoholics didn't develop uh, hepatitis or cirrhosis in the liver. And so he tested uh, his observation on rats and uh, found that uh, if he fed them unsaturated oils, alcohol caused cirrhosis and hepatitis. Mm. If he fed them saturated fats, it didn't. And so Nanji tried that on, on his patients and found that their liver condition improved if he gave them a lot of saturated fat and got worse if he fed them fish oils or seed oils. Gosh, so why do you think it is so prevalent in the literature that we're bombarded from every seeming angle, from the newspapers to the televisions to the radios and all the media outlets that are purporting the liquid oils to be the beneficial things? Because it doesn't matter where you look, you find cardiovascular research for this or for that, associating the uh, fish oils with lower incidence of cholesterol, improved heart health. And actually the picture from research is actually showing a very different story. I, I wonder why it is. Uh, there aren't many palm trees producing coconut <laughs> oil in the United States and Canada. Well, didn't you um, say, Dr. Pete, that, that when people take fish oils and they have high cholesterol, that the cholesterol moves out of the blood and into the tissues as a stress response? So if someone had a blood test to look at their cholesterol before and after using fish oils, it looks better after using fish oils, but it's not actually gotten out of the body. It's just gotten stored in the tissues? Uh, yeah, and cholesterol is one of our most important protective antioxidants, right. uh, generally protective antitoxin. And uh, for the, the unsaturated fats to lower that in the, the total production of it and the level in the blood it, it is part of why they're something to avoid. Uh, the, the liver knows to increase, retain any cholesterol it can because it's needed for cell division to go on, uh, for cell function to go on. Uh, all of the internal cellular processes rely on both cholesterol and saturated fatty acids. And if you overdose on the polyunsaturated, <clears throat> all of these intracellular mechanisms are deranged uh, by interfering with the cholesterol and saturated fat functions. Uh, the chromosomes, uh, the spindle that helps the cell divide, uh, separates the chromosomes and so on, all of these are stabilized and uh, uh, require the cholesterol and saturated fats to function. And uh, so you get deranged uh, expression of genes <clears throat> and deranged uh, cell division if you have too much polyunsaturated fat. And just to, <clears throat> excuse me, I had to pop out for a moment, so I'm not sure if you covered all the different types of um, oils that fall into the category of the unsaturated versus the saturated. Yeah, go ahead again. Just but with it, have <clears throat> humans have been eating saturated fats for forever. <laughs> for thousands and thousands of years, no and they didn't make seed oils. They didn't make oil out of corn. Apart from olive, maybe. I mean, well, then, but that's mostly, um, that's very little polyunsaturated. Mm -hmm. That's mostly monounsaturated. Yeah. Um, uh, the um, safe oils are butter, uh, chocolate fat, which is mostly stearic acid, uh, coconut oil, palm kernel oil, mm -hmm. uh, beef fat, lamb fat, and olive oil. But, and also, too, I mean, people think of, like, pork fat and chicken fat as being, like, um, bad fats, and they actually are bad fats because of what they feed the pigs and the chickens. Right. So unlike beef fat or butter or cream and milk <clears throat> and lamb fat and any other ruminant animal that has multiple stomachs, the chicken fat and the pork fat are just as bad as the corn oil because the basically, basically the pigs and the chickens are eating corn. Yeah. Um, and they're now farming uh, fish and feeding them some of the same foods that they feed uh, chickens and pigs. And interestingly, uh, the, the things we think of as fish oil, the fish that live in
in the cold oceans uh, get their fats uh, from plankton. Uh, if they eat small fish, the small fish eat the plankton. Mm -hmm. And the plankton fat is made by algae. Right. And the algae is where the N minus three fats come from, and the, the fish uh, modify them a little. But uh, basically, the, what we call fish fat is algae fat. And in experiments, they have uh, given uh, either warm-blooded animals uh, extra fish oil, or they uh, give the fish a diet containing less unsaturated fat, like uh, uh, grains or cereal fat and so on, or uh, ch chicken fat, I think, was one they used, or uh, anchovy oil, uh, the highly unsaturated oil of a small fish that a salmon would maybe eat. And then they tested their endurance. The rats getting uh, the fish oil had less endurance. Uh, the, even the salmon on a pure fish oil diet had less endurance than when they were getting chicken <clears throat> fat or some other less polyunsaturated wow. fat. Huh. Uh, so it's, fish oil isn't even so great for fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's hilarious. I've never heard that before. So what about, like, the farmed shrimp? Because there's so many shrimp. Do you think farmed shrimp even have the minerals in them, why it's no. good to eat shellfish? Uh, no, the, the good thing about uh, anything growing in the ocean is that it has access to selenium, iodine and other trace minerals uh, where uh, things grown inland uh, uh, depend on whatever is in the soil. So they're often deficient in selenium and, and copper. So farmed salmon, far, any kind of farmed fish or farmed shellfish, they'll all, well, apart from oysters, they have to farm those in the ocean, I think. Yeah. But they'll all be, um, they'll all be deficient, and then there's ac actually no point eating them. Uh, yeah, unless the, the people know exactly feed them and so they then, probably don't. Then they're giving them vitamins and then you're yeah. eating vitamins recycled, <laughs> recycled vitamins. Now, Dr. Pete, what do you, uh, what do you explain as the, uh, the problems in the food chain with those things that uh, either poison the cells directly um, or interfere with thyroid function all um, hinge on the fact that as organisms we need um, an excess of metabolic energy to cope with the insults of um, the foods that we're exposed to, the drugs that we might take, or um, environmental toxins, etc. Yeah, and uh, diabetes is a good model of the energy-deprived state. Right. And uh, they're starting to see, uh, several years ago, someone suggested uh, that Alzheimer's disease was diabetes of the brain. Okay. And uh, people are seeing the um, effects of inflammation in all of the degenerative diseases, mm -hmm. and inflammation involves a failure of energy and a shift to the basically the diabetic metabolism in which uh, all you can do with glucose is make lactic acid. Right, which poisons you again, right? Uh, yeah, the lactic acid is pro-inflammatory right. mm -hmm. and uh, doesn't produce enough energy for normal function. And the um, essence of diabetes was pointed out by Randall in 1963 or 64 when he observed that uh, if you increase the free fatty acids uh, in the blood, you very quickly make the cells unable to use glucose. Right. Did it, did it shift their metabolism from glucose directly? or? Yeah. Um, it's now been worked out that uh, there are two very clear points where uh, the free fatty acids uh, inhibit the use of glucose, uh, pyruvic dehydrogenase, and uh, uh, the, uh, that's the one you need to burn glucose. Right. And then uh, they stimulate glucagon, which uh, mm. happens to turn on the synthesis of glucose at the expense of protein. Okay, they yeah. stimulate glucagon. Yeah, and glucagon then in turn stimulates the release of more fatty acids. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, uh, there are several points like that where the free fatty acids activate, uh, for example, adrenaline, ACTH, cortisone, uh, thyrotropic hormone, uh, and glucagon, all of which increase the release of free fatty acids from your uh, fat cell storage. And uh, that seems very illogical of the body <laughs> to create those uh, vicious circles in which right. once you start having an energy failure, you turn on exactly what caused it. Right. But it turns out that it's only the polyunsaturated fatty acids that have those terrible anti-energy effects. Wow. Uh, if you look at uh, a comparison of stearic acid and linoleic acid, for mm. example. Which is like butter, butter versus corn oil. Yeah. Um, the, um, the butter turns off adrenaline and uh, uh, ACTH and cortisol. Which are the bad guys. Yeah. And the, the corn oil turns them on. <laughs> and uh, the excitotoxic uh, system in the brain that wears out and can kill brain cells, that's, those are uh, activated by the polyunsaturated fats. Uh, pretty so much in proportion to the number of double bonds they have. Right. So these could be the tonic more than linoleic. So these promote Alzheimer's then, or other neurological or degenerative. Yeah, and they're calmed by stearic acid. Right, which is beef fat, isn't it? Oh, stearic uh, from steers or stearate? I mean, well, it's in um, butter. And or not? Uh, it, okay. it basically is a Greek word <laughs> meaning fat. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we were taught <laughs> that oh, it was. I it meant it, yeah, from steers because fat. of stearic acid. Okay, so you're saying that these bad oils can cause diabetes, uh, cause a, a block your use of sugar so that the the blood sugar remains high, and also Alzheimer's. Right, they block your energy production. Yeah, course. and um, when you, if you look up uh, the saturation index, I, you, I googled it and saw that all except one of the studies found that people with cancer had much more polyunsaturated fat in the tumor and in their bodies wow. than healthy people. Wow. Uh, for example, twice as much uh, in one study uh, was uh, polyunsaturated where healthy people had equal amounts. Okay. And uh, putting uh, rodents on a, a diet of uh, high, un- high saturated fat uh, delayed their development of breast cancer, uh, fitting in with the saturation index mm-hmm. being a, a matter of protection against cancer. Mm-hmm. And similar for heart disease, uh, there was a study in which uh, adding the polyunsaturated fats shortened uh, the lives of the animals uh, with a tendency to heart disease, the saturated fat very high saturated fat diet greatly extended their lives. <laughs> didn't um, Mozzola, Mr. Mazzola, didn't he die of a heart attack after he <laughs> had been saying, oh, corn oil's great, like he was trying to sell everybody on corn oil yeah. because everybody was used to eating a saturated lard or butter or coconut oil, <clears throat> and he wanted people to buy his corn oil, so he said, you can drink this stuff, it's great for you, it's great for your heart, and, and then didn't he die at a young age of a heart attack? Isn't that true, Dr. B? I don't know about him, but I know of other I've cases. Read that. Uh, people famous for, for selling uh, unsaturated fats, dying of cancers that are known to be associated with an excess of PUFA. Wow. PUFA is our abbreviated version for polyunsaturated fatty acid, and that is every other fat apart from what we've listed, like palm oil, coconut oil, butter, Beef fat, um, olive oil. I mi- missed any others. Cocoa. Uh, we mentioned cocoa butter. Any other solid fat? In recent years, uh, people are seeing that the level of free fatty acids, which in our population means uh, mostly unsaturated fats, because those are the ones which are most easily liberated from the fat storage. Right. Uh, the uh, there's an extremely close uh, connection between uh, free fatty acids in the blood and your likelihood of 
uh, dying from just about anything. Uh, shock, aging, cancer, heart disease, and infection. Well, they're all associated with high levels of free fatty acids. Yeah. And isn't this uh, something that is good to test, or uh, good for a diabetic to test, because it could be showing that they're not using their sugar because their free fatty acids are so high? Yeah, and uh, a blood test. That's actually it's recognized for years that uh, niacin is effective for uh, not only heart disease but diabetes, uh, simply because it lowers the free fatty acids. But uh, that isn't catching on because it's so cheap. Yeah. So Gosh. food sources, does chocolate, <laughs> I know coffee has a lot of niacinamide, and um, what about chocolate? Doesn't chocolate have I don't know about chocolate. But also um, li- a beef, uh, I guess, ruminant animal livers, beef liver. Yeah, yeah. And what other food sources are high in niacinamide? All of the animal foods have a reasonable amount, uh, liver, milk, eggs. Okay, uh, you're, 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 <laughs> I'll start again. You're tuned in to KMUD Garberville 91.1 FM. Uh, and from any time now until the end of the show, you're invited to call in with any questions related or unrelated to this month's show of uh, energy production, diabetes and saturated fats just to explore the myths that are surrounding us and pervading our culture and media. And uh, the number here, if you live in the area, is 923-3911 or if you live outside the number, is 1-800-KMUD-RAD. Oh, look out, there's one caller or question or... Uh, we have a caller, but first I'll tell you it's 7.30 and 42 degrees outside, and here's our caller. Hi, yes, I'm calling from Port Bragg, where it's supposed to get down to 32 later tonight, <laughs> so uh, make sure you stay warm and get your animals in, just a suggestion there. And um, Dr. Pete, last show... Um, I'm a little older. I just had a birthday this weekend, so again, older. And uh, I have a little bit of difficulty hearing you sometimes. And during the last show, you did something where I could hear you very well, and I wanted to ask if maybe whatever that was, um, you could do that again, because I really don't like to miss anything of what you have to say. I appreciate your wisdom, and, and uh, you have great information. Um, and before I ask my question of you, Dr. Pete, I wanted to ask, is that Sarah tonight? Yes, it is, Sarah. I'm Sarah and Andrew are here. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, I just wanted to ask if I could borrow your um, brilliant play on words about how fish that are farmed are deficient when uh, describing the difference between <laughs> the nutrients in uh, farm fish being deficient compared to those that are out in the ocean. I thought that was really clever, and uh, my compliments to you on that. Thank <laughs> um, you. Yeah, and uh, thank you for the wonderful concept. Uh, my question... Okay, so my uh, question for Dr. Pete is um, based on a conversation I had with a, a friend who said that he has difficulty digesting fats because of uh, hereditary gallbladder difficulties. So I, I hope this is uh, in line with the topic in that his, the question that I have for you is, are there any available enzymes, supplements, herbs that would help in the digestion of fats where somebody has uh, apparently a difficulty in properly digesting those, uh, something that would aid in that digestion and better metabolize the uh, fats, um, basically a difficulty in eating meat, uh, red meats, uh, pork, etc. Not so much with fish or, or poultry, but still a bit of a difficulty in anything in that realm. Uh, there's a great tendency of hypothyroid people <laughs> to have gallbladder disease and trouble digesting fats and uh, the best thing to do for gallbladder disease is to improve your thyroid function and uh, avoiding unsaturated fats in all forms is very important for the thyroid function. Um, the, the, um, The myth tells us that the only difference between uh, the unsaturated and saturated fatty acids is their shape, and they claim that that has to do with the mobility of, of the fat in membranes and so on. But really the absolute difference between saturated and unsaturated is the way they bind to proteins, and since the basic framework of the cell is uh, protein, 
uh, the saturated fats uh, bind properly to the proteins and the unsaturated fats don't bind the same and bind to other proteins that they shouldn't bind to. And the protein that transports the thyroid hormone happens to, uh, it has sites that associate with the uh, double bonds in the thyroid hormone molecule. And the unsaturated fats bind to those same sites on the transport protein so that the protein can't carry thyroid. It carries unsaturated fats instead. And so uh, the... Well, that's, that's interesting to know. And I'll, um, maybe what I could suggest to him is that he'd look into what might be a cascading difficulty that originates in the thyroid and maybe prevents the... Am I understanding correctly that the, it prevents the... Um, a gallbladder from maybe properly producing enzymes necessary in that metabolism of uh, uh, fats? Right. Okay, well, hey, and I can hear you a lot better, so whatever you did, keep doing it, man, and you all stay warm and appreciate all the information that you bring to the, the air, all of you. And, and I wanted to say as well, for as, until he can get that sorted out, and or while he's working on getting that sorted out, there are lots of liver herbs that can help improve bile flow and help improve his digestion of fats. Uh, gentian, tinctures of gentian, uh, uh, burdock root, dandelion root, those are uh, very bitter herbs that can really help stimulate that flow of bile and help in the meantime until he can get his system working on its own. Cool. And gentian, is that sometimes pronounced ginseng? No, gentian. Gentian. Yeah. Swedish okay. bitters. I don't know if you've ever heard of Swedish bitters. It's a oh, yeah. traditional European tonic. That has all those types of bitter herbs in there. Okay, yeah, and, you know, sometimes us, we who aren't experts, a little clarification on that. Do you, can you spell ginseng for me just uh, for clarification also? Yes, it's G for George, E-N-T-I-A-N. Yeah, okay, so it sounds completely or it's spelled completely different from ginseng. It's like oh, yeah. G-I-A-N, okay. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thanks for all your information, and uh, have a good holiday. Thanksgiving coming up, and I'm sure he'll be happy to hear this for that big turkey dinner next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. turkeys are like chickens. They're full of the poofas. Don't eat the skin. And yeah. don't yeah, eat the, 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 the <laughs> right. stuffing well, that, that sure is inside the bird. I'm sure he'll help him enjoy his holiday better. So thanks again. Okay, thank you for your thank call. Thank you for your call. So, Dr. Pete, let's get back to the uh, energy energy balance and the disrupted disruptive effects uh, on energy of the uh, polyunsaturates versus the uh, saturated fats as a way of staying healthy by keeping and maintaining a high uh, metabolic energy. Dr. Pete, you still there? Um, yeah, it I'm went sorry. quiet for a while. Yeah, it did too. Did, did you actually hear the question or not? No, I didn't hear oh, anything. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let's, I just wanted to get back to the... Um, a concept of the energy balance in the organism and um, the negative effects that PUFA, the polyunsaturated liquid oils, seed oils, fish oil, etc., canola oil, how they impact the organism's ability to um, be metabolically active enough to have extra extra energy currency, as it were, to pay off the debt of uh, inflammation and other things that the organism might come into contact with. Um, the, the one enzyme that I mentioned uh, the pyruvic dehydrogenase okay. uh, is is the one that feeds glucose into the uh, right, oxidative TCA. system. Yeah. But then the the mito mitochondrial oxidative system itself is um, basically destroyed and this in is proportion the... to the polyunsaturated fat exposure. Right. This is the system within every cell. The mitochondria, the little factories that work in the cell. Yeah, it produces something like 35 times more energy per molecule of, wow. of sugar than the, than the uh, diabetic pathway can produce. Wow, because the, the diabetics are forced, uh, for want of a better word, into a fat, uh, a fat burning mode rather than glucose burning. Yeah, and if it was purely saturated fat, that would be okay. Right. Uh, when we're at rest, our cells uh, can burn saturated fat they prefer that okay. uh, the fat cells have been found to burn at rest. I mean, they're always at rest where the, the heart or skeletal muscles uh, only in a relatively quiet state. 
will burn saturated fats. But right. the, the fat cells, being always at rest, uh, slowly energize themselves by burning saturated fat. Okay. And that's why with age, uh, our tissues become more and more concentrated with polyunsaturated fats because the, the fat cells themselves are using the good stuff. Right. <laughs> and, and so with but, age, uh, all, it's seen all the way from birth to old age, there's a progressive increase of polyunsaturated fats in all our tissues. Right, from our diets. Yeah, <clears throat> and so then when we're under stress and don't get enough sugar, uh, then we have to burn the bad stuff, and that does many things to the mitochondria, including sometimes sudden death. But uh, the chronic effect is known to destroy the genes, the genetic material inside the mitochondria, okay. where fat, saturated fat doesn't. So the, would this uh, give rise to cancers then as a result of damaged DNA? Yeah. Or, yeah. So that you're saying that this doesn't really occur only only in the presence of polyunsaturated destructive changes. Yeah, the saturated fats are just quietly oxidized. Wow, because they're because they're relatively stable, or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they they don't break down uh, into the oh uh, isoprostanes and neuroprostanes are equivalent to the prostaglandins. Uh, okay. But, but they're made randomly under stress and oxidation. Right, and they're very inflammatory. Yeah, and uh, several of the fragment molecules that are made from the uh, N minus 6 or N minus 3 molecule uh, hydroxynonene L and hydroxyhexene L. Okay. Uh, these attach to hemoglobin, genetic material, uh, enzymes. Uh, signaling molecules. So, th are this, is this a glycation? Uh, yeah, it. Uh, no. Most of the things that are called glycation are are really fat breakdown products. Okay, so basically, if you're a diabetic, then most likely you're going to be breaking down these bad fats in your tissues, and you can get a blood test that shows that you have high lactic acid from this this inefficient metabolism where you burn this fat that's really a bad fat it's not a saturated fat yeah and well what would happen if a diabetic only ate saturated fats well it takes a long time to <clears throat> use up the uh depends on how old and how fat you are uh, a thin person can change very quickly mm. but uh the uh it isn't just the storage fats that become uh very highly polyunsaturated with with age, uh, but the, uh, every tissue contains phospholipids and uh, other very complex uh, molecules containing the fatty acids. So, what would be like the maximum time if someone who had cancer or diabetes or Alzheimer's? How long would it take if they stopped eating all of these unsaturated, polyunsaturated fatty acids and all these bad oils and just started eating butter and coconut oil? Well, they've looked at people moving from Holland to England, for example, or, or uh, rats or chickens that are put on a different diet. And it, uh, the complete changeover takes years, about four years. But you can, if you eat frequently, uh, and thoroughly avoid the uh, stress-causing foods uh, and don't let yourself get hungry enough that you uh, call on the uh, stress hormones to liberate fat, right. uh, you can uh, very quickly shift over to the uh, efficient metabolism, uh, frequent uh, eating, but always with sugar and always with uh, absolutely no PUFA, uh, you'll uh, allow the, the slow disposition of the unsaturated toxic fats. And our liver treats the, the PUFA uh, like it treats other toxins. It, uh, uh, if it has the energy, it uh, attaches them to a sugar and prepares them to be excreted in the urine, uh, just like... Uh, chloroform or, or 
<laughs> dioxin or right. whatever. Any other toxin. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's also why when um, like women will go on these weight loss uh, programs and they lose say 60 to 70 pounds in a year that their liver enzymes go up and their liver shows signs of stress, and that's because they burn too many of these polyunsaturates at yeah. once. Yeah, if your um, liver stays energized with frequent feedings and good nutrition, it can slowly uh, eliminate those fats without running them through the mitochondria. But when you're under stress, you not only uh, damage all of your, your blood vessels and nerve cells and so on, but you... They very specifically knock out the exact enzymes which are needed to detoxify things. So lots of um, snacks of fruit and cheese and or fruit and milk, things like that, to keep your your energy metabolism going well will help prevent these bad fats from coming into circulation too quickly at once. Yeah. And I think we have a caller on the line. Hi, um, I'm really enjoying your show. In fact, you're reinforcing what, what my mom always told me. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, you know, eat more veggies, eat more fruit, you know, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, she also wanted me to eat milk and drink milk, but that's another story. Right. Well, I'd, I'd recommend the same Very thing, good sir. For you. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm allergic to milk, so I'm not sure about that one. But, uh, but I, I've got a question well, for I'm you. I'm sure you could sort that out. <laughs> Uh-huh. Given enough time, I could help you out with that, too. But anyway, so what's your question? Um, and, you know, what I, uh, there's a, there was this, uh, I guess you'd call it a diet, a way to eat that was uh, talked about. Uh, what was, you know, you know how these diet things go. They're kind of a fad thing. They're, 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 they've come into people's awareness, and they're, they're the going thing for a while. But it was uh, called the eat right for your blood type. Oh, right, yes, I've heard of that. And and what I, you know, I, I don't usually subscribe to most of those things, but I did notice with that, uh, you know, I looked it up and said, well, what's it say? And it said for my blood type, uh, which is O positive, it said, um, you know, beef is really good and pork's not so good and this and that. And, and what I've noticed is that, you know, when I find myself in a stressful position or tired position, something like that, I get this yearning for, you know, to go have a hamburger or go have some meat or something. And after I eat it, I feel really satisfied and I wondered what you all think with your experience in studies uh, about the relationship between certain types of foods or maybe specifically uh, meat products and uh, and you know blood types or any of that kind of information or even cravings that would be an interesting question for you Dr. Pete as far as a person's craving for like when they really want that steak or they really want like I've been having cravings for watermelon. I really want some watermelon. So what is what is the brain trying to tell us that? Uh, there have been animal studies and some studies in kids uh, showing that we have very specific uh, nerve systems that tell us what we're deficient in, except uh, for the quality of protein. Uh, there are only a few of the amino acids that our our systems detect as as deficiencies, and I forget which those are, but uh, we we do crave protein when we're deficient in protein. If the the food is a balanced type of protein, and we crave uh, sugar and salt very specifically, uh, if we need those, and hypothyroid people generally crave sugar and salty food, uh, and uh, uh, vitamin C is is something that causes a craving for sour, tangy foods, fruits, for example. Okay, so I guess, are, are you, caller, are you still on the air? Yes. So did that answer your question? Well, I mean, it it, it does to a degree. I, I wonder, you know, the the factor is that I've noticed again, and I mentioned was there's a certain uh, level of stress that I've noticed that brings out some of that. Uh, well, I can know, notice when I'm tired, I get more cravings for sugar things, uh, but also stress will bring on, uh, you know, if I get really stressed and let's say I'm working, I really want that donut, which I don't, donuts are one thing that I just try to avoid, <laughs> you know, but I find that there is some uh-huh. that or, or, you know, as I said, the meat uh, thing. So I, I'm wondering because, because I do find I eat a, a, a fair amount of beef and I, 
and I, and I try to buy the lowest fat content beef I can. Um, and I, and I get it, you know, I'm hearing all your, uh, cautionary information regarding eating animal fats, and I'm just trying to find a balance there between what I'm, uh, my body seems to be, uh, craving and, uh, what I'm hearing, uh, from you and, and from your educated point of view. Right. Well, as far as the beef fat is concerned, that isn't, that is not a dangerous fat. Of course, now with industrial beef raising, cow raising, cattle raising, sorry, <laughs> um, what they're feeding the cows if they're heavily, if they're, I mean, if they're giving the animals hormones, those will get stored in the fat. All the toxins do get stored in the fat. But if it's a grass fed organic animal, then the fat should be fairly clean. And that, if you're, if you're craving, well, you didn't say you were craving fat, but basically I don't think beef fat is a super dangerous fat. It's the chicken right. fat and the pork fat and the turkey right. fat and the fish fat. Those fats are the ones that are, that are, have been shown in these studies that we've been talking about tonight to be, um, dangerous and blocking your use of sugar and slowing down cells metabolism and altering the genetics and all of that sort of thing. And, and, and your references earlier that I heard were, uh, at least with uh, the, the, uh, the swine and chickens were along the lines of that it's really the feed that, that's causing that. Would that, would that be the same uh, with fish? Are you, are you referencing only farmed fish or are you saying all fish? Well, well they've seen the change of diet affecting even farmed salmon, and it, the fish really have just uh, as almost an absolute uh, reflection of their diet in their fat. Uh, fish in the Amazon contain fat that's as saturated as butter huh. because of the temperature of the water. Huh. That's interesting. So, so, so the, the old uh, story of the Eskimo and, uh, you know, why the Eskimos don't get heart disease uh, uh, because they eat a lot of fish. Uh, that's because they eat right? whale blubber, which is very saturated. <laughs> They live uh, nothing to do with the fish. Live off a of whale blubber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know if I'll go that far in my diet. Uh, no, I know. Well, but we, we have butter. We have grass-fed butter. Right. Right. And gra- I mean grass-fed grass butter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef and butter. <laughs> and milk that's from you know grass-fed cows. But no, the ca- one thing I did want to point out is that when cows eat the bad food, just like the chickens and the pigs, all the corn and all the um, soy that's in it, the cows, because they have four stomachs, they can transfer that bad fat from the corn into a saturated fat. So it's not dangerous like if you ate the fat of the chicken or the pig or the turkey. Yeah, that's really interesting. I hadn't known that before. So and The cow's um, bacteria yeah, well, use vitamin E to um, saturate the fat, basically detoxifying the unsaturated fats. Um, okay, we've lost you, Dr. Pete. Uh, yeah, there was a noise. Yeah, so just, just say that again. You were talking about the... Vitamin E. Right. Yeah, and uh, vitamin E, even in humans, uh, will cause some of that uh, in the intestine uh, if there are bacteria present with the fat. Vitamin E lets bacteria saturate and detoxify some of the PUFA. So one of the... Uh, small effects of vitamin E is to destroy the polyunsaturated fat rather than just protecting against it. It's after effects. So if someone were to eat um, French fries, God forbid, no, <laughs> <laughs> then they could take up some vitamin E with it to help prevent some of the damage? Yeah, or make the uh, French fries in coconut oil. Okay, now that last caller who uh, who mentioned the uh, when they get stressed, uh, they want to gravitate towards, uh, I think he was gravitating towards meat, but he did mention that donuts would be uh, something else that he would consume perhaps under stress. That, do you understand that stress perhaps as being the need for blood sugar? or, or? Um, Yeah, the, there are these specific uh, needs. A protein deficient person or animal will gravitate towards a, a higher protein in the food, but uh, the most intense uh, connection between need and appetite is between sugar and salt. 
Okay, so sugar and salt are the good guys, as we've heard before many times. It's a, a kind of another misinformation, folks. So um, I know there's people that have tuned in this evening and probably heard things that they may not have heard before, and some people that have uh, tuned in have heard it, and they want to keep hearing more, which is all good. So we'll just reiterate the fact that the uh, misinformation that's out there in the media is uh, portraying the liquid oils as good, as soy as good, um, sugar as bad, and salt as bad. And when actually salt and sugar are both very important for you, anti-stress uh, compounds for lowering adrenaline. Um, and the uh, saturated fats are actually very good in supporting a healthy metabolism. Uh, what do you think about um, the free fatty acids in relate? Well, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I just want to say, <laughs> do, say but it's, you want foods in balance. You can't just eat salt on its sure. own. You can't just eat sugar just on its own. You want to balance it with a good protein and a good fat. Then you want to balance the sugar and the salt with a good protein and a good fat, so you keep it all in balance. Uh, I, maybe we have time for you just to explain uh, what the Randall hypothesis proposed that 30, 30 years ago or thereabouts that science wants to ignore now. Or I see some people actually are digging up that old research and starting to re-examine it. Um, yeah, some people call it the Randall cycle, but there's no cycle involved. It's just a competition when you raise your free fatty acids you inhibit the ability to oxidize uh, glucose and uh, stress increases the free fatty acids right and uh, oxidizing glucose is what you need to overcome the stress and and so it's it's a sort of a counterproductive reaction but the reason it's counterproductive is that our systems are designed not to eat PUFA. Right. And it, it's a PUFA which very systematically, it's just an amazing uh, black and white almost difference the way the, uh, the, the um, PUFA turn on the very stress hormones that interfere with the energy making it, the body need more stress hormones and uh, blocking the energy so that we need more you know, turning on the the very things that, that cause the problem. Why does the body want to do that? I mean, what? Well, the body is designed apparently from how completely systematic it is uh, to respond to saturated fat. Right. Uh, because oh, so saturated just... fats block the stress reaction. So uh, the properly functioning body would be logical. Uh, the stress reaction would uh, provide energy in the absence of food, uh, would provide the, the uh, saturated fats from the storage, and at the same time, it would inhibit the stress hormones and allow the cycle to be broken. So it's just that we, we happen to be living in a, a time since the 1920s when they make poisonous fats and our body is used to eating saturated fat for thousands and thousands of years, and it, it it's not responding to the unsaturated fats like it does to the saturated. So we're just getting poisoned, basically. Yeah, and it's not the body's if, fault. If if science had simply been looking to understand the situation since 1930, things would have been very clear yeah. by 1950. But uh, the the very systematic differences between saturated and unsaturated fats would have become perfectly apparent Evident, yeah. by, in just a few years of, of open discussion. But advertising just totally swamped the whole cultural situation. So even the scientists and doctors dealing with the situation... Uh, got embroiled. Huh? Yeah, they don't see the picture of how uh, clearly polarized the types of fat are in their uh, effects on the physiology. It's just become a big snowball effect. Yeah. Okay, well, we've only got four minutes to go, so I'm sure there's no more time for callers. And uh, I think for the people that are listening, thank you for those who've tuned in this evening. Um, Dr. Raymond Pete uh, has a wealth of information that I think you should all visit at least once. If you haven't done it yet, please do go to his website. It's www raypeat r a y p e a t dot com and there's plenty of uh, scholarly referenced articles that will 
uh, highlight everything that we've talked about tonight and plenty more. Um, so do take a look at the website and um, we can always be contacted uh, through Monday through Friday, normal business hours if people want to communicate any questions with us. And um, do you have anything else you want to add, Sarah? No, I'm I'm done for the evening. <laughs> uh, Dr. Pete, I wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything else you wanted to say or no. is there any parting words you have for our listeners? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. And eat um, Eat good fats and keep your energy working <laughs> lots of snacks well, thank you so much for sharing your time with us again we do really appreciate it okay thank you thank you okay so all those people that have listened out there there's always there's always an alternative so don't ever think you're stuck uh, and don't especially think that you're stuck having to do something that the uh, medical establishment tell you is the only way to go about treating a certain situation so whilst the uh, misinformation that's out there concerning everything we've talked about is so prevalent uh, don't believe that there's not another alternative because uh, there is. It's just you just have to open your eyes and open your ears. And for those of you who have ears, let them hear. Thank you and good night. We'll see you in December.